Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 25. <clears throat> And Israel bowed in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom, that's important, with the daughters of Moab, that's important. And they called the people unto their sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat, and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, that's a god, a fallen god. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. The Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. Hang them. And the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined to Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite-ish woman in the sight of Moses. And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, they're at, that, they're at the door, they're at the entrance, the gate. And they're weeping, they're upset that this sin is being committed. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it. He rose up from among the, the congregation, took a javelin in his hand. And he, went in, he, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Now we're going to separate from this chapter for a minute. Because we left a few chapters about Balaam. But we're not done with Balaam. When we come to chapter 25, we look at chapter 25, there's a reason why chapter 25 happened. It wasn't just the, the Moabite woman came and aroused the men of Israel. So we know that Balaam is a celebrated diviner. He's of Pethor, which is on the river, which is towards the Euphrates River. And Balaam subsequently foretold Israel should in the future what they're going to do to the nations. And we did that chapter 24, verses 15 and on. Israel will be victor. You can't curse them. So with his bad, bad counsel that he, we're going to look at tonight. You see, in chapter 24 is not the end of the story of Balaam. With scripture, with scripture, study to show, show, yeah, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. And we see in chapter 25, what we read verses 1 down to 9. Is a product of Balaam. Now, when we leave 24, it says here that, uh, let me move my marker here. 24, that made it worse. It says, Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. But there's more to that story with the scriptures. And what we're going to look here at. Is if we go to Jude 11, we're going to look at three points of Balaam, and it's found in the New Testament. Now, another man in the Bible is like this, Jude 11. Later on, we read in the Bible says that Lot was a just man. Well, when you read Genesis about Lot, you wouldn't get that story. So, in Jude 11. Woe unto them, deceivers. He goes back to verse 4. 
For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to the, condemna to the condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 11, woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain, but we know about Cain. We're not going to talk about him tonight. And ran, ran, greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. All right, so what we read in Jude is the error of Balaam. And the error of Balaam is he greedily. And he had his eyes on what Balak offered him, the fame, the honor, and the riches. That was there in his life, according to Jude. And the error of Balaam is if Israel were to be made to sin, God would curse them rather than bless them. The evil would produce an angry God. Balak, I cannot curse them three times. But if you were to get Israel to commit a sin against their God, then they'll be cursed. Can I have my money, please? 2 Peter 2.15 2 Peter 2.15 So all that we read about Balaam, he, God inspired through his mouth to speak. And we'll look at that. 2 Peter 2.15 Which has forsaken the right way and are gone astray, deceiving so far, we've seen two deceivings now of two ways of Balaam. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, now let's, here we go, match with Jude, who loved the wages un, of unrighteousness. He's making the gift that God has given him. He has become a hireling prophet. He is making a market of his gift. And we saw a man like that dealing with Peter in the book of Acts. Oh, how much can I give you to get this gift of the Holy Spirit? And as we studied the chapters 22, 23, 24, we've seen that Balaam was right. But then again, Balaam had this, this thing that about the money, about the fame. And we see that same man in Simon in the book of Acts. So he's making a market of what he's got. And he looks to Revelation 2.14, the, the third phase of Balaam. Revelation 2.14. And Revelation 2.14, we're going to look at what happened in our chapter tonight of Numbers. In Revelation 2.14, the Bible says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Now there's a, there's our chapter there tonight. You see what well, you gotta read and study your Bible to figure out, okay. I can't curse them. They're going to be blessed. I can't curse them. God's not going to repent of that. They're blessed. They are going to beat nations, but they are going to be the nation of all nations. All right. We're done. Let's go back to numbers again. In Numbers chapter 24. Except for a couple of the verses will be in Numbers. But Numbers 24, here's a problem. Uh, verse 11. Numbers 24, 11. Therefore now flee. Get out of here. To thy place. I thought to promote thee to great honor. 
But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. Now at that point, God says through the scriptures, Balaam is looking at that money. He's looking at, he's been defeated. The honor has been defeated. There is no riches. There's no promotion. So then, what we come up with before chapter 25, 25 is the work of Balaam. So in Numbers 22, we have a prophet that is able to bless and to curse. Numbers 22. In verse number 6. He whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. And we see that as a testimony of the king, Balak, of what he's heard about him. And we learn in 22 that he says in verse 8, Lodge here, I'm going to go seek God. He goes to God for what? word what matter he has for the ambassadors of Moab. But we also see in in verse number uh, 13, we see one third of the message. He doesn't give the complete message here. So later on, we see the inspiration that God's got to put that word in his mouth to preach it. And the second time he sent, verse 15 of chapter 22. Again, Balaam's, Balaam says, well, hold on. Let me go check and see what God has to say about this. And God says in verse 20, God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If, if, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But the word which I shall say unto thee, that thou shalt do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the prince. They didn't call him. Now he is going in rebellion against the word of God. And three times with the ass, God is trying to stop him. And we're left with God saying in verse 32 of chapter 22. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Balaam is going where God does not want him to do, and God's like, I'm trying to stop him. I don't want him to go. And then we learn that the, that the angel of the Lord says, okay, go, but you better do what I tell you to do from now on. And we get into Numbers 23. And verse 5. And the Lord put a mouth in Bel put a word in Balaam's mouth. That's inspirational. That's where you can show somebody, well, the Bible's written by man. Yeah. But out of the mouth of by out of the Holy Spirit has, has man written. Man is the pen, but the ink of that pen is the Holy Spirit. And we see in verse 8. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defiled? That's the first blessing. That's not what Balak hired Balaam to do. So now already we got a problem. At that point, when Balaam says, well, come with me. No, Balaam should have said, no. God has told me they are blessed and they cannot be cursed. We're done the story here. There's nothing else to say. We're done. And then Balak says, come on, let's go to this other mountain. And where I run into trouble is verse 16 of 23. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth. There's the inspiration again. But is Balaam rehearsing his mind? Oh, the fame, the money. 
And we have a particular same story we have in the Bible of Eve. How often did she look at that tree and say, hmm. That one day in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent said, at that tree, of all the trees in the world and in that garden, he shows up with that one knowing the woman has been watching that. So here is God again. In verse 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not, hath, has he said he shall not do it? Or hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? You can't reverse the blessing. We cannot do the cursing, Balak. And at this point, Balaam should have said, we're totally, completely done here. Because not only did God say in the first mountain, hey, they're blessed. You can't curse them. But God says, I am not going back on my word. I'm not repenting. I'm not a liar. That nation is blessed, and it will be blessed, and I'm not going to change my mind. That's the second blessing. Balaam should have went home. No more. And then we know Balak takes him up, and he goes to another mountain. And notice the mountain, verse 28. And Balak brought him, brought Balaam unto the top of B Peor. All right. Now let's look at chapter 25, verse 3. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. Now, biblical cities, cities in the Orient. Each, and there are cities like this today, each city has their deity. Abraham came out from the moon god. Ur Chaldees. It's a moon god. You, you ever know what the, the symbol of Islam is? It's a moon. Crescent moon. How interesting. And they say they're of Abraham, which they are. But not Jehovah of God, Abraham. So here we are in Peor, the last mountain. And there's a deity called Balaam of Peor. So in verse 24, verse 2, And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. He has been insp inspirationalized. He has been given the inspiration, the Word of God put in his mouth. The Holy Spirit is working with him. Now how many times has that happened? 1, 22, verse 8. 23, uh, well, actually, inspiration, 23, 5, 2, 23, 16, and Holy Spirit, 24, 2. That ass moved out of the way, 1. That ass crushed his foot, 2. That ass dropped on the ground, 3. God is working with this man, but he is rebelling against God. God told him not to go unless those men come knocking on your bedroom door or whatever door. However, unless those men come. Man, he got up dressed, got on his ass, let's go. No, and God said, your way is perverted. At what point did Eve sin? And here is the question. At what point is sin is sin? That serpent showed Eve. She looked at that tree and said, oh, that thing looks good. The lust of the eyes. He's looking at the lust of, ooh, look what I can get. The pride of life, honor, fame, promotion, and riches. The devil is using the pride of life on Balaam as he used the eyes, the lust of the eyes on Eve. Now, was Eve a sinner before Genesis 3? Absolutely not. God would talk to her. God would show up in, in the cool of the day. God would talk to Adam and Eve. We know that because it happened in Genesis 3. It's just they sinned. That's what ruined the thing. God is using. He is blessing. Balaam, Balaam's got in his head like Eve had in her head. Oh, I love that. I want that. 
And there are things with our, the, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eye. Satan will use that. Satan will use, and that's what we call temptation. He was tempted, and Balaam's tempted. Where did Balaam fall? Well, we see the fall of Balaam in, when we read 25. But we're not there yet. So 24 too, the Holy Spirit is working on Balaam. That nation cannot be blessed. I mean, excuse me, that nation cannot be cursed because they're blessed. They're wonderfully blessed. They're highly blessed. You cannot curse them. Matter of fact, they're going to conquer the nations through Jesus Christ. So 24.10, Balaam's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. He's angry, and Balaam said to Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed these three times, three times with a donkey. Therefore now flee thou thy place. Get out of here. Get away from me. I thought to promote thee unto great honor. Remember Jude? Remember Peter? That's in his mind right now. I lost it. But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. Now that's in his mind. Jude and 2 Peter. He said, well, where's the doctrine of Baal? It shows up just before 20, chapter 25. Doctrine means taught, teaching. And what he's going to teach Balak is... If you can get those, your people, Moab, we'll look at that in a moment. If you can get them to violate a wicked sin such as idolatry, they knew. The nations knew about idolatry, which Israel didn't follow. Isn't that interesting? I hired you for what was to be done, and you didn't do it, so you're fired. Get out of here. 24.13, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord saith, that I shall speak. And he did that. He did that. But he also did other things. He had spoken the word of God. But what was in the mind of Balaam? In the Bible, again, we got to go to the New Testament, 1 Timothy 6.10. And with the other scriptures that we've already read, 1 Timothy 6.10. And 1 Timothy 6.10 is written to save people. They just fell away. I'm not saying Balaam was saved, but I think he was right with God, but look what happened. And watch the wording between Jude and Paul writing to a young preacher. For the love of money. Now, see, that's misquoted on television in the world. They say for the money is the root of all evil. Money can't do nothing. It can buy you good things. It can pay your bills. It can keep your electricity on. It can be, get, keep your water. But the love of money, and that is what we saw in Peter, and that's what we saw in Jude about Balaam. He had the love of money. And for the love of money is the root of all evil. Evil is a consequence of sin. And Balaam is going to produce a whole bunch of evil because he loved money and the fame. Now watch this. Why, the, love, the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, coveting to sin. Now watch this. They have erred from the faith. Did we catch that already? Did we already read that? I'll read you Jude again. And ran greedily. That's a word that goes with money. After the error of Balaam. For a reward. So what is it with Balaam that Satan said I can pull out my toolbox and use on you. He loves money. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's what happens. Sometimes money is not the answer to everything. So he was inspired by God, Numbers 22, 9, verse 12, 20, and verse 32. 23, 5, and 16, and 24, 2. He was inspired by God. Except Numbers 22, 13, he spoke God's word correctly. Remember, in 22, 13, he gave one third of the message. At no time did Balaam ever say, God said he blessed him. My job is done. I'm going home. At no time. Now let's go back to Numbers 23. Numbers 23. We got 2313. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place. At that point, Balaam should have said, No, I'm not coming. 2327. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee. Absolutely not. Come on, God blessed him the first time. God said, Almighty God said, I ain't repenting of what I said already. I'm not doing it. But there had to be something there for him to keep following Balak along. And in his mind was that love for the money. That fame, that honor that Balak said, I'll give you. So there's a possibility, not only did Balak think in 13, not only did Balak think in 27, that God can change his mind, that God can, you know, if I go to a new play, it looks like also Balaam had that in the back of his mind. I'm going to get paid some way, somehow. So verses 22, 17 to 22, had not Balaam go in the first place, but 22, 17. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the prince of Moab with him. Oh, I'm in 23. 22, 17. For I will promote thee unto very great honor. And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. And God comes to him and says, listen, if they call you, you go. No, he got right on that ass and stepped off. Let's go. I want that. So Balaam was right in God, but in his mind and in his heart, he's looking at riches. He's looking at the love of money. Now, so let's go to chapter 25, tonight's chapter. The doctrine of Balaam was Balak. Watch this. Here's the doctrine of Balaam. And Israel bowed and shit him. And the people began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. There's the doctrine. Balak, if you were to pervert those people, if you were to get them into whoredom, if you were to get them into sexual immorality, if you were to get them in idolatry, God will hate them so much, he's got to unbless them. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. There it is. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. That's the work of a deceiver you see in Jude. You see of Jesus and Paul and Peter speaking about. They turn you away from God, from false gods. That's the work of the deceiver. That's the context of Jude. That's the context of Second Peter. Jesus warns us about deceivers. And Paul warns us about deceivers. Now look at verse 1. Moab. Look at verse 6. The Midianitish woman. You see Moab and Midianite? Go back to 22.7. And we're going to do chapter 25 again. But we're looking at tonight, Balaam. 22.7. Numbers 22.7. And the elders of who? Moab. There it is. And the elders of Midian. There it is. There's these two peoples that sent for Balaam. Here they are in 25. They are involved in the doctrine of Balaam. I can't curse them. All I can do is bless them. Well, get out of here. You're getting... No whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. But if you were to take yourself and your people, and if you were to go and get them angry with God, doctrine, deceiving doctrine, 
try to turn them away from God. Well, God's got to unbless them. God's got to curse them. Then you got what you want. Can I have my pay? And we're not done. We're not done. Let's look at Joshua 22, 17. Let's see the result of what happened here. Joshua 22, 17. It had a big reflect on Israel. In Joshua 22, 17. Now what has happened is the tribes are going back over the Jordan River on the wrong side of the river. They built an uh, altar. Israel gets in a panic. Oh my God. You guys, oh, they built that. God's going to kill us. God is going to destroy. God is not going to put up. And look, look at one of the things they mentioned in Joshua twenty-two seventeen. 17. Is the iniquity of Peor. Here we are. This is where we are. Numbers 25. Too little for us. For which we are not. Cleanse unto this day. <laughs> Although there was a plague in the congregation of, uh, the congregation of the Lord. And that's what we're going to be studying in Numbers 25. Man, you know how bad that was back there in Numbers 25? Which they didn't have Numbers 25. But you know how bad that was in Peor? And you're going to build this altar? Man, God wiped us out with a plague. You guys going to build this false altar? You're going to make God mad at us again. That's how bad that was. How many years later when Joshua, they are in the promised land now. And these tribes are going back to their settlement. They war, they help Israel. They're done. Moses says, when you're done, you can go back on the other side of the, the, the Jordan River and settle there. And well, we're going to make this altar. The Reuben, the Gadites, and the Manasseh. It's a false altar. It's not a correct altar. And the people would, would, in the Israel saying, God is going to whip our butt again. We're not in a mood for this. That's how bad it was. How many times is Israel going back into where God's plagued them? Not enough. They, oh, we want water. We want food. We want water. We want food. We want water. We want food. We, and they, kept, they never remembered what God did to them. But all that matter of and see the P.O.R. And that's where we last see Balak and Balaam together. They're at Peor. And it's almost like they looked over, they saw that idolatry, and Balaam says, if you get them to worship that in your people, or any idol, if you add sexual sins to that, we'll get you. In Numbers 31, we'll look like I said, we're looking at Balaam tonight. Numbers 31. Numbers 31 and verse 8. 31 8. By the way, if you curse Israel, you will be cursed. I will curse them that curse you. Watch Numbers 31 8. And they slew the kings of Midian. There it is. Beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Eva. And Rechem and Zur and Hur and Reba and five kings of Midian. Balaam, the, also the son of Beor, there he is. What's happening to him? They slew with a sword. Balaam never made it home. So let's, go, let's go back to 20. Let's go back to where we were. 20, 24. 24, 25, Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place. He did. He went home. And do you know what? He came back. That's the problem. He came back in the Midian. I don't know if he was telling them what was going on or he was checking up on what he'd done. And in 31, 8, 31.8. Let's see what's happening. 31.8. Okay. And they slew. And then we get down. To Balaam the son of Beor. They slew with a sword. Ready? Verse 9. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones. And took their spoil of their cattle and all their flocks and all their They wiped out the city. Knows how they kept the women. Numbers 25. And they 
burnt all the cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both men and a beast. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp of the plains of Moab, which are by the Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priests and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. They had no idea what was happening. Here comes the army. Let's go meet them. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands, and the captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto him, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel throughout the council of Balaam, the teaching of Balaam. All right, here it is. To commit trespass against the Lord in the matter. There's Beor again. And there was a plague. We'll read that in 25. The congregation of the Lord. Idolatry and whoredom with the Moabite women, Moabite women. That is the doctrine of Balaam. There it is. He couldn't curse them. Oh, but he could get God mad at them. That's interesting. And the wages of sin is death, and Balaam died with the people that hired him. And then one more place, Deuteronomy 24, verse 3. About Balaam tonight. It's almost like a in-between... Deuteronomy 24, verse 3. So Balaam did sin. He did let his heart go for the love of money. That moment that God said, if they come knocking on your door, go. They didn't. It had Balaam not gone. That moment that ass, the three times, okay, let me go home. No, I'm not going to second place. No, I'm not going to third place. Verse 3, Deuteronomy 24, 3. And if the latter husband, wait, that's not. Deuteronomy 24, uh-oh. I guess I got the wrong verse here. Um, yeah, 23, 3. I'm sorry, 23, 3. Hmm. I was like, what? The Amorite or Moabite. Now, Deuteronomy is written to the men that are going into the land with Joshua. They're going into the land. It's the second giving of the law. The Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation. Shall they not enter the congregation? A Moabite cannot go and be part of God ever. He cannot go to the temple. He cannot go to the tabernacle. Aren't you glad it didn't say Moabite is? Because Ruth would not be able to. He said a Moabite. What's been the problem with the men? Let's read on. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came out of Egypt. And because they hired against thee Baal and the son of Beor of Pether, of Mesopotamia. Look, now God's going to tell us that. He is over where Abraham was. He's over where Iraq is, and Iran is, and he dies in Moabite land. He hired to curse thee. Now watch this. And we'll go back to numbers, and then we'll be done. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. Now, keep your place there. Go back to Numbers 22, and I'll show you something interesting. Numbers 22, verse 6 at the end of the verse. This is a testimony of Balak. He whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou curses is cursed. And God himself said, Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Baal. Now, isn't that interesting? Balaam did have that power. I will curse you, then you're cursed. I will bless you, and you'll be blessed. And God says, I ain't listening to it this time. I'm going to put my words in your mouth to make sure you do bless that nation. I tried to stop you three times. 
But you still get going. And it says to you, you are going in a perverse way. And he just kept on going in that perverse way. God tried to stop him. And God tried to stop him first mountain. Should have left. Second mountain. Should have left. Third mountain. And he says, listen, God did not promote me, promote thee because you didn't do what I told you to do. And then the second thoughts came along. And then you have the doctrine in Numbers 25, which Lord willing will study tomorrow night. But well, there's the doctrine. The way of Balaam was, I want riches, I want the fame. And the error of, of Balaam is, well, if you make Israel so converse in their sins, God has to curse. That's an error because that's what some churches teach today, that God's all finished. The error of Balaam is God's all finished with Israel. He's done with them. No, he's not. There will always be God's people forever and ever. Don't go the way of error, of Balaam. Don't ever do that. 